Well, greetings one and all, and welcome back to another video here with your host, Andrew. Firstly, I'd like to say, I hope you had a wonderful fountain pen day yesterday, whether it was buying items, using your pens, whatever you are actually using your fountain pens for, I hope you had fun with them. Uh, I'd love to know what you actually got up to yesterday if you celebrated Fountain Pen Day, so please do leave your comments uh, in the section below and I'd love to read and respond. So that leads me on to a very special pen here from Waldman and that's the Tango Imagination. So without further ado, let's roll the titles and crack on with this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so a couple of bits of housekeeping to start with. Today's video isn't sponsored, but it does feature a product from Luxury Brands of America. So the thoughts are my own and aren't influenced by anybody else. Uh, so it's gonna be completely 100% honest review. There's um, lots of things I like about this pen and there's a few things which I feel could be potentially improved. So do hang about to the end uh, where I'll give you my final thoughts and feelings. Or if you just want to skip to that right now, you can by just using the timestamps in the description box below or just hovering over the timeline down at the bottom. Okay, so many thanks to Luxury Brands of America for sending this pen out to me uh, for review. Again, thoughts on my own. Have to stress that because I know there are a few people out there which think, well, when distributors or shops send you stuff, they're looking for favorable reviews. They're not because ultimately at the end of the day, their reputation hangs on the actual credibility of reviewers as well. So we've got the one, we've got the Waldman, not the Waldo, the, the Waldman uh, Tango Imagination. And this really is quite a beautiful uh, looking pen. Uh, so let's go over to the table, we'll unbox it and have a closer look. Right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we go. We've got the outer box, very nicely presented. We've got some silver foiling going on on the top. Very nice. It hasn't got really any reflection to it, but it's quite a, a nice little finish on the box. On the side, we've got a little barcode, which I'm guessing indicates the model. And then we can take the outer box off and have an inner box. It's the gift which keeps on giving. Uh, very similar affair to that of the Anoto um, boxes. And I do like this as a sort of presentation style. It does make you feel that you've got yourself a quality product. Okay. On the side, we've got um, the Waldman logo and the company name. And again, debossed on the top, we've got Waldman and the company logo. And then on the bottom, it says made in Germany since 1918, which is a little bit faint, but it's a, it's a nice presentation nonetheless. Okay, we'll open the box and then we've got the pen on a pen pillow. Take that off. And then we've got some cartridges. We've got the sleeve which the pen came in. We've got a warranty card. We've got a 925 sterling silver hallmark. And then on the other side, we've got <laughs> a reminder saying, this is a high end writing instrument, um, has a cap with a screw system. I think it should say that has a cap and a screw system. Uh, please do not pull the cap. Okay. It gets the information across, even if it isn't grammatically correct. Right, so some cartridges in there. Fantastic, we have six of them, lovely. And we'll put the pen pillow back. And then we'll take out the pen. Okay, so now let's go back over to the table. So go back over to my face and we'll have a closer look at this pen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So there's not a huge amount of information about Waldman other than the fact that they were founded in 1918 in Fort Sign, Germany in the jewellery sector. So obviously they've taken a lot of inspiration from the production of jewellery, uh, whether it's guilloche patterning uh, for watches, using sterling silver, which would be predominantly used for jewellery. Um, so you can certainly see a lot of influence in the sector in which they are actually producing their pens. Um, that said, you know, taking inspiration I think is absolutely wonderful, up to a point. Um, and I think what I'd like to really highlight is that this pen is completely unique. There's not really anything like this out there in the sector. So kudos to you, Waldman, for producing a very unique looking fountain pen. Okay, so on uh, to the pen itself. I'm gonna give you the dimensions. Fantastic. So we've got flat finials on both ends, functional clip, 
does go into a shirt pocket. Sometimes you have to raise the actual clip just to get it to slide in. It doesn't slide in quite as good as had it been a, a roller ball clip or a ball clip. The pen does post and it posts securely and deeply. I will keep my hand guided there because famous last words, but that's not going anywhere. Okay. It does back weight the pen. Um, and I do find that if I was going to post it, my actual grip would actually go all the way to the actual barrel, which is a bit of a shame. Okay. When you have this pen unposted and onto the section itself, it's quite comfortable. I would prefer it to be slightly larger. This is definitely for a pen for uh, maybe smaller hands. Um, and I do find that my thumb does rest on the thread assembly. It's not sharp, but it does rest um, a little bit further back. Uh, it also on uh, warmer days, if you have got particularly oily hands, it can be quite slippery. The actual stainless steel nib is a joy to write with. Uh, the fine nib is beautifully tuned. We've got a plastic feed and then we have got an international cartridge converter underneath with Waldman branded on the bottom. Okay, so I'll just have the cap put on. And there's a few other um, bits. So we've got the Waldman logo, as I said, on the actual clip. We've also got Waldman Germany on the center ring, or Waldman made in Germany on the center ring, I should say. And we've also got a little hallmark there as well for 925. Um, I was trying to find that earlier, um, but it's quite nicely disguised in there. It does break up the patterning a little bit on the actual barrel, and it meant it being nice to have the 925 stamped on the bottom, so that wasn't actually interrupted just right here. Okay, so let's go and see how this pen performs in a drawing and writing sample. So please do go and join me over at the table. Well, welcome to the writing and drawing section of the video. This will be predominantly sets back to music this section so you can just see the pen performing um, up close and personal. I'm not going to talk too much about the writing um, in this section. I will leave that to the actual end of the video. Um, but I hope you enjoy this section. So I'll invite you to sit back, grab a nice hot drink if you're in a colder country or a nice cool drink if you're in a warmer country and enjoy.
Okay, I'm not going to bother writing out uh, Waldman Tango Imagination again, just because I've already got it written out. But I will write the, the nib grade, which is steel. And it's a fine nib. Uh, ink today is my lovely Tasha. Savi Midori. Superb. And I'm just going to write out the quick brown fox and try and talk over as I write. So what I love about this nib is no matter how I seem to angle it or rotate it, it just keeps up. And it's smooth without being too much of an ice rink. And it's just a, a, a real joy to use. Apologies if the light becomes a little bit too strong. Uh, we've got one of those days where the light just seems to be creeping behind the cloud and then it comes out again. And it, it's making for recording a bit challenging today. So the quick brown fox. And then the clouds have just gone back in again. So you just have to bear with me on this, I'm afraid. And here it comes out again a little bit. <laughs> Wonderful. In terms of flow for the e pen, it's pretty good um, for a fine steel nib. I mean, it's not going to be a gusher. And I'm also using quite an absorbent paper, which is Midori MD. Uh, in terms of flexibility to the nib, there's the minutest little bit, um, and the feed keeps up, so you can get a little bit of expression out of it. Um, I wouldn't uh, want to flex, over flex this, just because I think you would end up damaging the nib, but there's a little bit of flex to it if you push down. Sorry, Bryce, if you're watching this and it's uh, making you curdle on the inside but I have to show what the pen's capability is so yeah pretty good uh, I mean you can get some quite expressional characters there if you really give it some beans anyway um, that's the writing sample and the drawing sample over that leads me on to doing a size comparison and then I'll give you my final thoughts and feelings right ladies and gentlemen so if we have a look at these pens with the exception of the Nakaya, which is a little bit shorter, but certainly a bit chunkier, the Waldman is certainly a, a good mid-sized pen. Uh, the Namiki Yukari is a, a slender pen, and I feel it's probably the closest in terms of comparisons to that of the Waldman. And then, of course, we've got the Wet and Wise here on the left, which is a little bit um, wider and just a hair bit um, thicker. So let's just get these uncapped and have a look at those in comparison. Okay, and now that we've got these uncapped, we can see that the Namiki is a hair bit longer. Um, the section, I would say, is a tad thicker, certainly coming towards the collar, uh, with the Wet and Wise and the Nakaya also having uh, wider sections as well. That just goes to show quite how slender the actual Waldman Tango actually is. It's certainly going to be a a pen for smaller hands, um, but I, I still get on well with it. And certainly from the, the drawing sample, I had no problems actually utilizing it. Uh, I am quite flexible when it comes to different pen sizes. I tend to find that I can get on with most pen sizes, but I can also take an appreciation that for some people, they might find it a bit of a challenge to actually use something on the slightly smaller size. I know certainly from a lot of reviewers, um, certainly a lot of men out there, they don't generally prefer to have larger pens. For myself, it doesn't seem to bother me. Anyway, that's the size comparisons done. Now let's go over to give you my final thoughts and feelings. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, well, welcome back to my final thoughts and feelings. Um, for those who are just joining me, welcome. 
Um, if you've enjoyed the content so far today, um, I would invite you to leave a comment in the section below and let me know what you've enjoyed, um, if there's something which you'd like to have improved. Um, again, I'm always open to feedback. Now, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Bryce from Luxury Brands of America. Uh, your speed in getting this delivered, absolutely fantastic. I got this pen within about four or five days and I've enjoyed thoroughly writing with this fountain pen. Now, there are a few things which I'd love to see improved um, and I will talk about those in a moment. Now, who's this pen for? Who is it not for? This pen is slender, so it's definitely gonna be for people with smaller hands and it's gonna be for people which don't mind metal slick grip sections. I have found that I'm finding it a lot more comfy holding the pen further up to the barrel than actually on the section itself. And that's just partly because I do have relatively oily fingers at times. Uh, this is a bit of a fingerprint magnet and I did notice there wasn't a polishing cloth in there. Um, it may be something which is included, I don't know, but in mine there wasn't. Um, so if that is the case, a polishing cloth might be a nice thing to uh, include. Okay, so, I mean, really, when you buy a pen like this, you're buying it for the aesthetics because, you know, about, what, a couple of weeks ago, uh, when I did my preppy review, it writes just as well as the preppy, you know? You can get a really good writing experience for five, six pounds. So you don't have to spend 330 pounds on a fountain pen. So why would you? Well, that's a good question. I think when you start going past a certain price point, you really are buying into the aesthetics as much as the writing experience. And this brings it in trumps, I have to say. It really is an elegant looking pen and it looks like 330 pounds. It doesn't look like anything more. It doesn't look like anything less. Waldman have really found a fantastic um, price point for this fountain pen. That being said, I can't personally recommend this pen to everyone, and I'll explain why. One, it's slightly too slender for many people. Um, this is definitely, I um, don't want to sound sexist, but this is definitely more of a feminist or feminine pen, and it's certainly not going to be for people which don't like metal grip sections or the slick variety. So how could we uh, make a fantastic pen almost perfect? Because let's face it, the aesthetics of this pen are just absolutely sublime. Uh, they really are. I love it to bits. And as I turn it, you can really just see how marvelous this finish is. So how can we improve it? Well, that's a good question, I think. <laughs> um, I would consider stainless steel section, but either sand or bead blast it, or do what um, Graffitas Pen does and do a, like a micro engraving on there just so that there's more grip. Because there is, let's face it, at the end of the day, a massive segment of the market which just doesn't like uh, metal grip sections, um, which is a shame, to be honest, because I feel there's a lot of people which are missing out on the aesthetically beautiful um, looking pen here. Um, so yeah, I mean, if Waldman could produce either stainless steel, brass or whatever metal they want as their grip section, and then either sand, bead, blast it, or micro texture it, that would be brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Still, I would consider, you know, keeping the, uh, the actual sterling silver section, but make it available as something which could pe people could either buy as an aftermarket product or uh, specify a different grip section when actually going to the checkout, because I, I think that would really make this pen just 100% incredible. And I would probably rate it as one of the best pens I've tried this year in terms of writing experience and aesthetics. Now uh, that takes a lot for me to say, especially considering my collection is pretty much predominantly Arushi based now in terms of where I'm wanting my collection to go, but I would make an exception for this pen if it had a more comfy grip section. Okay, so that really brings it to the end of um, today's video. I hope you again enjoy the content. 
Um, the only thing left for me to do is say my goodbyes and I shall see you next week. Till then, stay safe and goodbye for now. Thank you.